My name is Liza Hostetler Ingalls. I am one third of Avazil Dances along with Dana Fitchett and Devin Fitchett. Hey everybody, I'm Devin Fitchett. I am the second third of Avazil Dances and this is Dana Fitchett. She's the third third of Avazil Dances. First of all, major thanks to anybody who has given even a dollar to our project. Um, we are so super grateful and also just really um, overwhelmed and excited about the amount of support that we've received from family, friends, colleagues, um, other artists. Uh, it's just, it really means a lot and it really is helping us to bring this dream closer to a reality. So thank you total awe and floored by the outpouring of financial support. Um, so thank you and thank you again to those of you that have contributed financially um, to make one of our dreams come true. Thank you very much to everyone who has donated. We appreciate it so much. The project is going really well. Um, it's been fun, challenging, empowering, rewarding, um, all really positive things. It's really an amazing feeling to be able to create something of this magnitude with people we love and care about um, and respect uh, and to be able to call it your own. Um, at the same time, we're hoping to make a significant impact for a cause that we really believe in. Dana, Eliza, and I are having a ton of fun in rehearsals. The dancers that we're working with are brilliant, motivated artists, and I think that we have all had um, some sort of epiphany type mo moments in terms of our art and the way that we work. We're working really hard on transforming the Artist for Humanity at the Center into a performance space. Um, it's a big open gallery space so we're working on um, chairs, mats, um, a stage for us to dance on, um, all of that. We're, we put together a really great team of people to help make the show happen. So um, the uh, the piece that I worked on today, I'm very excited about. Um, it's an amazing song called Replaceable by Moses Sumney, who everyone should go listen to it right now. It's an awesome song. Um, and I'm choreographing it just for Dana and Devin. I want it to be a small group piece. And um, part of, for me, what was so appealing about this project is that these two artists who I respect and love so much were like, hey, we want your choreography in here. And so, like, you know, huge, warm, fuzzy feelings. I like really wanted to do that with them. So we had our first rehearsal for it today, started learning it, and um, it went so well. It was really, really, really fun. Um, so that's gonna be an awesome piece. And then um, I also like to experiment with like different ways of working with other choreographers. Um, so Dana had this idea, which I'm super excited about. Um, she has a piece, and in the first part of it, uh, it's gonna be split. So she is choreographing a unison part, and then um, she's going to start with doing some choreography um, to the next piece of music, and then she's going to teach that to me, and then I'm going to reinterpret what she has done in my style, and then teach that to one of the dancers. So I love doing stuff like that. I love doing like different layers of choreography that start at the same place. Um, so that's going to be really cool. <laughs> Um, one of the things I feel most grateful for is just how much I've learned about the production process. Um, despite having been in so, so many dance productions, I was shamefully ignorant about a lot of what it, um, what goes into making the production happen. I feel um, empowered in a way because I know that if I were to do this again, I just have so much more um, background knowledge than I came in with this time. Um, another really great thing about Engaging in Entelechi has been the readmission of my artistic side. Um, I feel like my creativity was kind of a little dormant um, because my full-time work doesn't really engage that side of me. Um, but working on Entelechi and being back in the studio and generating new choreography and resetting old choreography that I kind of forgot how much I loved um, has made me feel like an artist again. I'd say that the biggest uh, unanticipated impact of working on the show has been kind of a more 
introspective self-evaluation of what my life focus is in general. Um, I am loving being back um, kind of entrenched in dance in a real way, but also it makes me sad that I haven't been for the past many years. Um, and I wonder if I'd like it to be more of a focus of my life. I care a lot about the full-time work that I do um, in education, but I also really miss um, being able to commit more time and energy to dance, which really um, feeds my soul. Um, I think in reflecting on what has been most valuable for me during this process, um, artistically, it's been challenging but solidifying. So I've always self-identified first as a dancer, then as a dance teacher, and then as a choreographer. Um, and in the past few years, I've actually made the, tra the transition into self-identifying first as a dance teacher, then as a dancer, then as a choreographer. So choreographer has always fallen last. Um, I feel really confident in my teaching and feel like I know clearly what my approach is and what results I want to see and I almost always feel like I see those results in my students. As a full-time teacher I'm choreographing for the kids a ton but my priority in the studio with them is to make sure that they're getting solid technical training and well-rounded exposure to all types of dance um, and while obviously my choreographic voice determines what I create for them my artistic priorities are usually secondary. I feel like this process has really helped me to self-identify more strongly as a choreographer. Um, it's helped me to explore what my priorities are as a choreographer, and it's helped me to figure out how to communicate those priorities in each piece. It's made me more, overall, it's made me more confident in my work. Also, the more I work, the more I see a common thread in the results of that work. Um, what is that common thread? Come to Entelechi and find out. have 10 days left to reach our $13,000 goal. Raising the funds that we have set in our budget, $13,000, um, is important. Every penny of that is allocated to pay someone for the work they're doing. Um, firstly, about a third of that goes to our rental fee at Artists for Humanity. Um, and it's more than just a rental fee. They're, they channel their rental fee money directly into their programming. Um, which what they do is they develop um, youth in the art, arts. They teach young people how to um, make a living being an artist, which you know is obviously something that's very important to all three of us. Um, the rest of it, you know, we we want to pay people well for the work that they're doing um, to create this work. So we have an amazing lighting designer. We want to pay him for his work. We have uh, a sound designer. We want to pay him for his work. We have a stage manager. We want to pay her for her work. Um, so we have all these people. Um, that are working really hard, and um, you know we want we want to pay them well. We also have these beautiful dancers who you know deserve to be compensated for their work. Um, you know, unfortunately, so often dancers are expected to work for free, and that what does that say about how we value our artists? You know, we want to set an example that dance is as worthy uh, being recognized financially as any other job. So we want to ask you to donate whether you can give $1,000 or whether you can give a dollar. Um, so far we have raised $8,000 and the vast majority of that has been small donations. We have a couple of big donors, but um, the vast majority of that has been $5, $10, $25. So even if you think that you can only give a little bit right now, still give that little bit. We will use it and we will appreciate it so much. <laughs> Avid Seal Dance's number one fan, <laughs> Martina.